song to just torture everybody with. Mic check, mic check. Chelsea, it's five o'clock. It's Thursday. No, it's not. What does all this mean? It means that it's our show, Chelsea and Tony Live. We're going to review your pictures. We're going to, like, do sassy things. That's our show. This it's episode is brought to you by our sponsor, Squarespace. Sure. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. They have beautiful award-winning templates, an all-in-one platform, award-winning 24-7 customer support. It's so easy to do. You can drag and drop. You can make it pretty. It's easy. Just go to squarespace.com slash Tony and you can use the coupon code portfolio for 10% off. That lets Squarespace know we're pretty great and it also saves you the monies. If you're watching us live, go to sdp.io slash link and you can send in your Squarespace portfolio for review. That's right. We'll dig into your pictures in real time. Thanks, Squarespace. Real time. Real time. There's a couple of ways you can communicate with us. You can just write a comment. <laughs> while you're watching live and our producer Siobhan out in Philly can read them to us. Questions are good. Siobhan can read. Funny comments are good. Funny comments are good. Uh, or Funny comments, money comments, honey comments. These are the comments we'll be accepting. It's mostly the money one though. <laughs> Hashtag TC live on Instagram or Twitter and our producer Justin here in studio can toss your Twitter comments, your tweets up yes. on the screen. In the garbage. Will do. What's up, Justin? What's up? Night photography is our theme for the day. So go to sdp.io slash submit, send in your night photos, and we'll take a look at them like, like now, basically. sdp.io slash submit. Yeah. And in two weeks, the theme will be abandoned. Abandoned. Abandoned buildings. Abandoned cars. Yeah. And actually, abandoned. next Thursday, we're abandoning you. But we're coming back. <laughs> wow. That makes the theme like authentico. <laughs> yeah. Unlike, unlike your first love, we will return to you in two weeks that got so sad <laughs> unless your first love was and then good for you yeah it, it always works out for the <laughs> best right um you i guess hey, we could take a look at hey, some wait, pictures unless you hey, want to hey 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 patreon.com slash northrop if you're following us and supporting us on patreon you can vote on the next theme we already have some votes. There's some good ones up there. Animal Interactions was popular last week. If you're not a Patreon supporter, for a dollar you can vote. That's affordable. Yeah, or five bucks you can see our videos early. And we'll probably put up some exclusive videos too. Like right now we have a video up there about uh, why you should use those extended ISOs on your camera, the low ones. And I have like good examples and stuff. But we haven't published it yet. Ooh. So only those Patreon people get to know what's up. What can they get for $50? Uh, long conversations with Siobhan at any time of the night. They can also you get Siobhan's phone number for just $100. You can snuggle Justin. <laughs> this is a one time option for live viewers yeah. only. So sure. So just call in and you know, we'll make it happen. I'm also going to be getting you a cashmere bodysuit for that, Justin. So I'm going to need your measurements. We'll make it work. <laughs> Okay, you want to look at some night photos? Jim Setzer, I'm all about this guy. Jim Setzer jumps in here with uh, a 20 image stack of the moon. That moon looks into a long oppressive. exposure. Oppressive. Oppressive? What do you mean? <laughs> it's so big, like it's going to crush everyone. Oh, yeah, it is a little scary. I wouldn't say that, you know, to the eye of somebody who does night photography that you think it was realistic, but other people always kind of like that. They, they love seeing the moon comped into things, and the moon shot itself looks good. Yeah, I think it does. I do like the foreground, how it's a little bit blurry and mysterious. I just had to raise the shadows, because I thought maybe Jim was going to like sneak a little message into oh, us or sneaky. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kim. Uh, Toyota GTS. I love those cars. I think they're just gorgeous. I like the lines of the car are being shown off. Mm -hmm. Also, the sunset. It's like two beautiful things together. Okay, I'm giving Kim a pick. That that's just fantastic. Yeah, exactly. Composed around the lines. Mm. Great shot. This seems to be a bridge. Uh, don't jump to any conclusions. <laughs> People really hate it when you're wrong about stuff. Uh, we have some detail in the sky left. I think it's nice. I think you know, and 
closer to sunset, you might have gotten a little more color in there. Uh, but nonetheless, the bridge itself is great. I think the composition is really nice. I like the reflections in the water. Yeah, I wouldn't be afraid to bright it, brighten it up. I'm I know, not afraid. Um, this is probably going to be one of the top things we do is brighten these night exposures because people always send them in so dark. Uh, but there's no real reason to. You know, it's just because it's a night photo doesn't mean it has to be dark. I will still know it's dark because we'll see the lighting that's consistent with night. Like the sky is darker than the clouds and the buildings are lit up. So you know it's a night photo. Um, I do think you'd you know you'd want some some blacks in there and use a little more contrast. Yeah, yeah, that's why we do teamwork. Okay, good job, David. Steve, this is moonlight. Yeah, it's it's very cool, right? It's very I like blue. it. It's cool. It's like uh, when you know it's night during a movie because everything's kind of blue. Mm -hmm. He went for it. I like it. Is it? Is it level? I can't see because everything's at an angle to me. I'm genuinely asking. <laughs> you're just tilty. Yeah. I, it might be a little off level. It can be tough at night because you're looking through the viewfinder. It's so hard to see anything at all. Um, I don't know. This is a different type of shot. I mean, you wouldn't necessarily even know that it was taken at night, right? Um, and, I don't and in think fact, it, was it? it? It's hard to say because look, it, it's like ISO sixty four. Uh, that's true. At one sixty of the second, it's probably not a night shot. Okay. Well, <laughs> just in case it is. I will say I've tried taking terrestrial shots at night, just shots of the ground, and you think it's going to look like a night shot, and then it just it just looks like a day shot. It's because without you know, some additional clues like stars or streetlights, your eye just doesn't perceive stuff as being Four shot at night. Foreground lit by phone. You That's not a bad idea. I break out that cell phone flashlight a lot for things like night photography, just because it's an emergency light and I never remember to bring a real light. So it's the light that you always have with you. It's the light in your pocket. Uh, and it's, it's the, this kind of shot takes a lot of practice to balance it correctly because how quickly you move that light and how much light is put out is going to drastically change that foreground exposure but it, i think it added a lot to it I otherwise think it, looks it nice. been dark yeah nice good done. job dan um so here we have using night conveniently for a long exposure and i think it's an interesting shot you know the, there are actually some stars setting in the shadows there again the the sky has become just black and that becomes just a really massive part of the composition so having some detail in the sky is better i know like you don't always get to exactly pick the time that you're going to be out shooting it'd be nice sometimes you're out to dinner or you're with your family and you can't plan around the blue hour the hour after sunset so that's one thing that you could do to improve it but i think the composition is interesting the dutch tilt there is interesting lots of I like you know, that historic too. stuff i do like it sean do you have any comments or questions any important things to tell me Sardeep Singh says, well, he asks if Tony can supply him with a headshot of himself for his website dedicated to famous silver-haired hunks. He's on it with Leslie Nielsen and George Hamilton. <laughs> That's the only two other people? Wow, I'm in a good You're in good company. company yeah. um, you should add Steve Martin. And that's it. And just keep it at that. Okay, good. I'm glad you cut yourself off. Yeah, I'm in it. <laughs> if he really wants that, he could get one from my Twitter, but sure. And then I, also I see the send us sure. that link to that page <laughs> yeah, so I can need enjoy to see that. that. <laughs> um, oh wow! This shot's gorgeous, wow. right? Yeah. I brighten it up a little bit. Maybe it needs to even be brightened some more. Um, it's tough. If you can see the stars like that, then there's just the terrestrial, uh, the ground is going to be so dark. So it can be tough to balance those kinds of things. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, a graduated filter in Lightroom might work a little bit better. I think they might have just comped the background in. I was trying to just figure that out. It might just be a straight up comped in. Cause... Do you think? I don't know. I don't think so. Because look at this. If you look, zoom in here, the grain here and here seem to match somewhat. Yeah, I thought that too, and I didn't see any transitions that were too harsh. So, yeah, it, it might be natural. I think it's natural. Um, it's tough for me to say because I live in a city, so near any time it 
the sky gets towards the ground, it just fades a whole lot, and it seems super obvious. Light pollution. But, yeah, if you have no light pollution, maybe that's how the sky actually is supposed to look. This is gorgeous, we'll right? Know. Ruben. Oh, that makes me hungry. <laughs> this name makes you hungry? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to raise the overall exposure some because I think this building here is really interesting and that adds a lot to this it. This is really beautiful. I'm going to give it a shows. pick. Yeah, that one deserves a pick. Great I shot, I don't think Ruben. we need to tell you anything else. Oh, Karen. What happens if you... You got artsy with it. Grab your tripod a little too fast. Well, I think Cameron's considering this a happy accident. I think it's a cool shot. It definitely adds something more compelling to the standard skyline. I think we may as well bump up the colors, Cameron, if we're going fun Yeah, just it. go for it, right? I think it's cool. I don't think it is a happy accident. I think he did it on purpose. Oh, yeah? Okay, cool concept. Pat here has... Pat? I was trying to figure out if that was a plane or a comet, but I think it must be a comet of some kind. I don't see any blinking. Um, very cool. I think star shots are always a little more interesting when there's something in the foreground here. Uh, so in fact, maybe there is, but it disappears. Um, I'm just looking at these stars. I guess they there is some... It's weird for 30 seconds for there not to be more movement, but I guess over at the corners here we see some more movement. They must be pointed just directly towards the north or south pole. Cool shot, Pat. Do you want to see if there's... Ah, oh, look at that. Holy shamoli. I almost skipped right past it, but look, there's this really interesting foreground. We just couldn't see it at all. Pat. Uh, so, okay. you know what we can do is... Here we actually have to use the light pollution to form the silhouette. This is so magical. Tony, let then, me do. Okay. Oh. Do. <laughs> Pat, look what we all did together. Before and after. Can you believe it, people? Right here. You saw it here first. I feel like at Chelsea people are at home applauding. <laughs> Let's all... Slowly, a nice slow clap and they're just joining in. Mm, that was beautiful. Yeah. Um, you know, once again, I feel like the detail in the foreground here is kind of getting lost and in the this shadows. This is very spooky to me. Are you guys feeling scared? Like something's going to attack the people in this tent? I think you've watched more horror it's movies than done camping. Cloudy. Maybe that's why you're afraid of it. That's true. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I actually think it's really nice. I imagine this is the moon rising here, and I like the light coming from inside the tent. I imagine somebody's reading a novel before they fall asleep. Cool shot, Sam. I've... I'm just going to move on. Okay. Alistair! This is a cute little boat. Look at it. That is a cute little boat. <laughs> An adorable little boat. Um. Good. Ah, Mateus. A uh, very nice kind of setup shot. It feels very candid. I, I like this one a lot. I'm glad we saw kind of a candid portrait. I don't know. I just think it's cool. I love the light coming from his I hand like and the, the context in the background. Yeah. That's a great I, I, shot. I was drawn back here to this figure. Siobhan, hey. Yeah. Do you have any questions or like... Uh... Hey. hey. <laughs> yeah, you. I have a couple. Um, Troy Hall wants to know, how would you expose for a portrait near a campfire when the fire is the main light and part of the shot? Yeah, you're right. That's tough because it's going to be really orange. It's going to be, have a lot of contrast. I'd say just expose for the person's face, mostly. It's hard to say. Yeah, definitely shoot raw, and you'll want to clip the highlights a little bit because the fire is definitely going to be the highlights. But there's going to be like a huge difference between mm -hmm. the light reflected from their face and shooting into the fire. I've done that, and it's it's really hard to get. You'll definitely have to raise the shadows in post, so you want to be on raw. It's tough, and the color is going to be no color. It's just going to be orange. Orange. It's what else? Monochromatic. Sayo Bahan. Um, yeah. Excuse me, still 
Hey, child, quiet. <laughs> <laughs> what are your opinions on funeral photographers? Um, that seems to be a cultural thing. So, um, part of my family does that sometimes. You'll see pictures not of the deceased person. Um, it's fine. I mean, if that's a part of your culture, go for it. If it's not, people might look at you a little bit funny. And also, don't exploit it. Don't do it just because you think it's different and you think it might get attention. That's wrong. That's real <laughs> I don't weird. Think that should be your thing. You should probably know. <laughs> well, I'm wondering, like, deceased. what is this person's intention? Like, is this a part of their culture and they're wondering if it's normal or are they like, man, it might look cool, Zeb? Like, are they trying to be edgy and really inappropriate? I don't really know where they're coming from. Yeah, you're right. If it's cultural, cool. If if you think your thing as a photographer is going to be crashing funerals and taking <laughs> tight photos of people crying, that's probably not cool. <laughs> don't Maybe do that. No, right? sometimes Who people like in the name of photography do some pretty crazy things. Uh -huh. They're like, it's my art. <laughs> I'm violating everyone. This is going to go viral. <laughs> Eugene made this perfect picture of Science World in Vancouver, I guess. Eugene, I want to go there. See, he's got the blue hour going on. Look at that sky. Eugene knows We've seen so many just that? solid black skies, and this is the way it should be, just an hour after sunset. So I'm gonna look, give at, him a look at how much more interesting that color is. Yeah, that's perfect. A P. Sean um, Wright. This is a, one of those shots where we, I wouldn't know if it was taken during the night or day. I'm just going to take your word for it. Uh, I can see you're it's on a long minutes. exposure. It means you don't need a ND filter to get a long exposure like that. But nonetheless, I think it's a nice shot. Um, I definitely like to see the snow be nice and bright without clipping the highlights too much. Sure. So I'll just raise it a little bit. You go for it, Tony. This nice is shot. your show. We got Ingrid using a fisheye lens. Very cool. Uh, yeah, interesting angle. Oh, I see this is Another the building. building reflected in it. Oh. That's a really cool composition. I'm going to give you a pick. You did something different. Yeah. Cradle of Ragtime. Star Trails on a six-minute exposure. Um, and fantastic job bouncing the foreground with a six-minute exposure. Yeah, that turned out really nice and perfectly done. Uh, the, okay, so Michael here stacked images, and there was a little bit of gap between the different images. And as a result, we ended up with little, little lines. Um, it's okay. It's stylized. Yeah, I wonder why that is. Maybe Michael's using the intervalometer and it waited a second between them or something. If you use an external shutter timer and just lock the shutter open, that can usually happen. If you check chapter 10 in stunning digital photography, there's a trick in there. If there's a software that will eliminate those lines for you. But at this scale, I didn't even notice it until I zoomed in. But I'm just trying to be helpful. I like I the colors, cool the orange and the blue. Yeah, and you found a great subject for the foreground. James. James Beard. Looking at the really nice London Tower here. Really good. Yeah, th there's still plenty of detail in the sky, but the lights are on, so we know it's it's a night shot. You know, you'd have to wait until the middle of the night. This is really the best time, perfect time on this. What do you think? Too much. Oh, no, I think, that, I I like think that's great. I like pretty things, so this is great. You know, maybe Pick. I'll check out our uh -oh. portfolio submissions a little bit early tonight. Maybe oh, we got a cool one. Tonight. I never really know what you're going to do, Northrop. I know. It's a wild roller coaster when this you and show, me strap in. This show, you never strap know what's going to happen. <laughs> Just hang on to your butts, audience. Let me Tony's open up a bunch of portfolios, and then we can pick one. Or maybe two, because that's how crazy I am. <laughs> Dang. I know. Okay. Here are a bunch we can pick from. Which of these catches your eye? Where oh, we looked at that one, didn't we? Yeah, because I said I knew this man. Mm. And I know I recognize that photo. Okay, we'll try to find a new one. That one might have been uploaded last week, but maybe we didn't look at it. That's a cool shot. This one. John Shedwick. Okay. Look at me. Let's at least look through the rest of them. That's a great shot. Mm -mm. Oh, next mm -mm. photo. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, you wanted this one. This one with the sheep looking at you because the sheep's looking at you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and let's go right to that picture. Okay. Eye contact. I know I'm being silly, 
But eye contact is actually important because when people see eyes, they look at them naturally. So if you have eye contact at the very front of your portfolio, you're more likely to draw people in, even if it's from Adorable's little sheep. Yeah, there are a lot of things that make this picture awesome, right? But without that, it would be a nice landscape photo. But with that, yeah, it's it's great. Let's see. I want to give it a pick, down. but it's not possible. I yeah. thought it was cool. He had the GPS coordinates. Yeah, I've never seen that before. Where was it taken? I know. I kind of want to explore it, right? <laughs> oh, my god. This gosh. is exactly where it was taken, so you can go back and get that picture. Okay, okay. We've uh, never been to that part. Yeah, that's actually really cool. Thanks for including the GPS coordinates. That's awesome. Thank you for being a friend. Wow. So this once again, it's, too. Yeah, it's a landscape contrast. photo with animals as a foreground or as a focal point. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that splash of color. Where was that one? Do you really want to go back and see where it's from? Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Wait, is that the same I'm valley? his biggest fan. Okay. We could just follow in his footsteps. Let's talk. Let's follow him. What? More in the UK? How... Are you, How are you getting like, pictures in the UK where it's not overcast? Tony. I've never seen the sun in the UK. He lives there. I know. That's the secret. You can't just visit the UK. You're going to get rain. Dang. That's how they this keep like out a fairy tale. Look at that. Oh, oh that's crazy. Your shots are awesome. You're cool, man. <laughs> I mind you that lady. Yeah, Chelsea's doing an impression of somebody you guys have never met. No, I didn't mean to. I just absorbed her personality. That's cool, man. Oh, more sheep in the foreground. He knows the Dang, all these pictures are, are I awesome. I mean, what can suggestions can we make? This is a pick. perfect portfolio. Let's adopt him. Let's go to his about and see how old he is. Oh, man. Uh, okay. Yeah, if you're like 16, I'm going to go to the UK and just slap you. He's a little younger than us, but I think we could still adopt him. <laughs> uh, I don't know, John. Fantastic portfolio. I don't even know what I can suggest. I'm just going to go onto your Instagram and follow you, okay? Follow also, we're going to literally follow you because you gave us the coordinates. And we oh, have boundary issues. I hate this dual factor authentication stuff. No. I'll follow you later. Uh, He's probably going to forget, to be honest. Hey, you know whose portfolio, who hosts that portfolio? Squareface? <laughs> Squarespace, Chelsea. Squarespace, not Squareface. <laughs> if you want your own awesome portfolio, mm -hmm. go to squarespace.com slash Tony. You'll get a 14-day free trial, no credit card required. So you might as well just go sign up, try it out. And then if you like it, you can put your credit card number in and actually make an awesome portfolio. Use the coupon code portfolio for 10% off. Thank you, John, for sending in your portfolio. And thanks, Squarespace, for sponsoring us and making all this possible. You, you want to do some chit-chat? Yeah, but there wasn't a lot. Got to warn you. Okay. This is chit-chat. chit-chat chit -chat this week. It's the part of the show when we go into our YouTube comments and we laugh and we cry and then we present you with the best of that. I am Mr. Nice Guy says, you suck, gray hair guy. Leave these to us young studs. Stick to your hair color videos. Yeah, my hair color videos as I do. He does have really good hair color videos. Mm. First my, my whole life is about my hair. I'm just always thinking about my gray hair. That's what defines me. Um, I know you are. And then someone said, your mother made a mistake. Oh, I don't want to read that. Let's just keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Nice Guy. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no one was a nice guy in that comment, Dad. <laughs> Rudy said, Chatty Kathy needs a gun to her head. LOL. And I was like looking through some of her comedy videos, and you would be surprised by how many violent comments there are of people being like, I'd punch her in the face. I'd <laughs> drown her in the lake. I'd put a bag over her head and suffocate her. I'm like, I'm sure you would. I watch the news. <laughs> You know what I would do? Like, just, just walk away. Yeah. Just like hang out with somebody else. <laughs> That's all. You really don't have to pull out guns and stuff. They don't know conflict Rudy, resolution. You're you reacting just be like, to this situation. You know I'm gonna go home. Instead, he's like, I think my gun is needed. <laughs> America. 
Um, Ryan says, do you two ever fight about whose name is mentioned first? Yep. But not legit fight. But the thing is, you think Tony and Chelsea looks better, but Chelsea and Tony looks better. But also it's better for ser search optimization if things are alphabetical. But also ladies first. But also <laughs> I'm the greatest. It seems like you put together a real argument for your case. The way it works <laughs> is whichever one of us makes it puts our own name first. So if you see Tony and Chelsea, then you know that I've set it up. And if you see Chelsea and Tony, then you know that she set it up. We do not have consistent branding. We don't give a damn. It'd this be is like our world. Sometimes it was Coca-Cola and other times it was Cola Coca, depending <laughs> on like which one of the managers was doing it. <laughs> we know it's silly. We get questions about it. Sometimes people are like, it's not the same. And I'm like, yeah, who cares? Who cares? <laughs> Whatever. Nobody cares. Okay. Thanks for sending in but your comments. But we don't like legitimately fight. It's just kind of a joke to us at this point. And also I should always be first. That's it. That's all there is. Siobhan, do you have any questions or comments or anything? Yes. The very kind Jerome Sedlock paid us $25 and said, thanks for SB SDP Readers Group. So many of us get so much help from each other in this group. Thanks. Oh my gosh, that's so nice. I'm glad you. that you like it. I've been in there trying to keep everybody in line. And uh, there are some very nice people and helpful people in that group. So I'm glad that you're enjoying it. Yeah, for those that don't know, if you get the book Stunning Digital Photography, you get access to the Facebook group, which has like 25,000 people in it. 26,000. 26,000. Mm -hmm. And they're the most civil 26,000 people. I mean, and they're, they're from all over the world. So conflicts arise because we have different sensibilities, different tastes. And managing that can be a little bit difficult. So yeah. stuff comes up. But for the most part, I, I can't imagine another corner of the internet with 26,000 people from all over the world getting along this well. Yeah, people are extremely helpful. And it's also cool because I like to get to know our readers. So I'll watch people. And I've seen many people go from beginners to professionals. Mm -hmm. Erky being one of them. A lot of people getting it on the ground floor I know them better but I still watch people and it's just very cool to watch them improve yeah that's so exciting to me to see that progression uh you want to take a look at some pictures I actually want to talk to Siobhan more more Siobhan yeah. okay great shot Philip D give you a pic um I liked this question what the hell is there any particular photography genre that you don't like to shoot um I'd say I'm pretty spoiled. I get to shoot everything. So when I say I don't like something, it just means I have other, I like have something I like more, but weddings. And that's just because I'm not very good with people. So I'd rather be taking pictures of animals or something like that. Yeah. I, I don't mind the occasional wedding that we do because it's a, a challenge and it's fun, but I wouldn't want to do a lot because it's, exhausting and it's super high pressure and so at the time that's kind of cool and i'm into it but then when i think about doing another one i'm like oh my god it's so hard to shoot weddings yeah i just don't feel like my heart is in it so i like to just do what i want to do yeah is there any other other type of photography um nothing else really came to my mind and, and even with weddings i don't i i always enjoy it i have fun but, while i'm doing it yeah but i, I never really want to go back to it yeah, I can't really think of anything else. So maybe there's other types of photography that I just haven't, that I've just completely avoided. But I don't know. I enjoy sports and wildlife and street and travel and nature. I know. Underwater. I love that we get to take pictures. I can't think of anything that I hate. Justin, is there a type of photography that you just have found you don't like? <laughs> no, no, there's just uh, a bunch of stuff I haven't really practiced, like portrait photography and stuff. That'd be fun to get into. But yeah, I don't, you don't nothing I hate or anything. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Siobhan? Yeah, you shot everything. Not Siobhan everything, has a, a blog. Siobhan has a blog at Northrop.photo, and every week she takes pictures to the theme. And she's also learning. So she's like telling you what she learns, what mistakes she made, what she'd do differently, and then she links to our videos and stuff like that. Yeah, I feel terrible at everything. Um, <laughs> I don't like shooting landscapes. Really? Well, she doesn't have yeah. any. Oh, it is kind of tough in Philly, yeah. Yeah, I don't have much to work with. I don't think my camera's great for it, but it might just be that I'm not great at it. I, I have a real hard time finding like 
a focal point. I, I, I just, I, I can, find nature boring to photograph. Yeah. I think that, well, you're not around nature. And I found like, I never shoot landscapes when I'm here because we don't really have many spots. We have oceanscapes, really. But then whenever we go on a trip where there's good landscapes, I like it. And I think you get that reinforcement when your picture comes out beautiful. Like, you're like, I like this. And if your picture comes out kind of ugly, you're like, hmm, I don't feel that great about it. You don't have that reinforcement. Yeah, but It always like feels really difficult to capture what you're seeing. Yeah, yeah. And I think landscape can be, be pretty technical, too, because you have to keep going back to the same spot. And you have to wait for the good weather. And you have to wait for a colorful sunset or sunrise. Or it's like... It just takes yeah. a ton of practice. Yeah, patience and practice. You have to enjoy the process. Yeah, yeah. Like people if you don't that like, like hiking. just being in nature for weeks and weeks, then yeah, you probably just. Don't That's why that. those Norwegian people have really nice landscapes. So if you want to go to Norway, Siobhan, you might get some good landscape pictures if you did that. Guys, I check do. out the Joe Brunkash picture. He labels it the NASA Aurora Research Rocket. But look at this thing. Did it blow a hole in the Aurora? It's remarkable, right? I, I don't know how many pics I can give this, but... You want to give him all the pics? Well, it's crazy. He's got a rocket launching through the Aurora Borealis, and it's all perfect, and this must be like the first stage terminates, and then momentum carries it forward, and then the second stage fires off. Uh, and he somehow has you know, perfectly framed it around. I just, this is an amazing shot. It's really amazing. Let's give him a pick. Yeah. I just wish I could give you more. And this looks like a big hand, hand? of the demons from the sky coming. And that's what Aurora is. Fabian. Oh, sorry, Fabian. Um, this shot's awesome. This must be a burning man or something. Don't you feel like it's a burning yeah, man? Yeah, we got to go to burning man. We should do, um, a, a Northrop photo meet at burning man. Okay. Sign me up. Awesome shot pick. I love that. It's a silhouette of the Siobhan dude here, just right? Goes, what? Siobhan, what do you think about that? That's my own personal hell. What? Why? Everything about it. The desert, the hippies, the people, the music. No. I Nothing. haven't been. Maybe it's my personal I haven't personal been, hell. but I think you're supposed to just drop acid and make friends. That sounds all right. It seems like a contact lens hell. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of dust there. Trey Rack but goes all the time, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think he's always there. At least there's a photographer represented. Yeah. Um, Look at that doggo. He's like, oh, I'm a hippie. <laughs> but you have a good silhouette on the guy here and a good silhouette on the dog there. And that's really key to making this picture. Unfortunately, this doesn't really convey. I almost wonder if some dodging and burning over here could bring out the shape of this because the way it is originally you, you don't really see what it is you have this kind of heavy vignetting on i think and that just masks it too much so i would try to bring the shape out a little more so that we know what's going on um you have these people's heads here which is a bit of a distraction maybe that's what you're hiding i, with I the like vignetting. it because it tells me there's an audience there yeah so i think i actually like it a little more with a little less vignetting Oops, things are crazy because i would i'm done Okay, Charles, here's a man that likes nature. The stars be on the trees. So poetic, I like it. Yeah, it, it's a great shot. The only thing I would think about is the, the posing a little more. Just like in the last shot, your body is, becomes a two-dimensional silhouette, so you have to mm -hmm. think about separation between your arms and hands. So he should be like this? Yeah, like walking like an Egyptian. That's racist. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Boston. I, this is in Boston, right? Yeah, this chain this... has got to be the most photographed chain in the world. Because <laughs> this is just the best spot to get a, a Boston skyline. And people always kind of get down low and use that chain in there. Um, I like this a lot. I think it's a great shot. Yeah. Good job. I'm going to give you a pick, though. Perfect. It, and great use of the blue hour. Dave. Dave. He's from New Zealand, but he uses a chili bin. Airplanes always wrecking your star shots, right? This dude's got a lot of air traffic going on. I mean, it didn't wreck it. <laughs> it's a nice shot. You got good colors in there. 
<laughs> I'm just laughing because I'm at, like you guys are just used to me saying chili bin every time there's someone from New Zealand, but he's probably like, why is this woman saying this to me? I know people always get mad that I don't react more, but I've heard you say chili bin like thousands of times <laughs> in my life. So it doesn't even register. I just, I've habituated to chili bin. <laughs> I, it right I do now. say chili bin just for no reason. Okay. I like the colors. I don't really know what's happening, but I like it. You know, I feel like this needs some kind of focal point. I don't know, to me, like the shape in general, if you look at it small, it's just kind of hard to see what's going on. What is, oh, it's a national memorial. Okay. Like there was, just wasn't any particular pop for me, but you know, technically like everything's great. It's nice. I'm gonna give it a pick. Um, Oops. Interesting focal point here. We can definitely brighten it up, right? Ooh, Overall, oh. it's gonna be better yeah. just to see that. Yeah. I like this. Yeah, cool focal point. Cool, cool, cool. Whoa. Whoa. Is it the Eiffel Tower? <laughs> um, that's a cool shot. I'm gonna give you a pick. It was creative. It's small, it's good. but it's, it's really nice. So good. This uh, is a little flat. The lighting. Yeah, there's nothing here that indicates that it's a night shot, really. I see a couple of lights on. I don't know. Um yeah, because it is just flat. Maybe it was really early and people hadn't turned their lights on, but in a city, we really need those lights to know it's a night shot. Wow. Whoa, Ron. <laughs> this is like a postcard. You know how in postcards they compile all the monuments mm -hmm. from a particular area? Yeah, I know that's, about that. It's perfect, Ron. I'm going to give you a pick. It's more of a rhetorical question for our audience than <laughs> like a literal question. No, you. I was just let me do it. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is really scary. This is I, so spooky. The photographer is so brave for pick. staying there and capturing this moment. But he probably it. didn't live. It's probably one of those things where they recovered his camera. And... Kevin, I was there when this happened, so I can confirm this is not a comp. Yeah. Yeah, it's legit. It's very legit, and it's amazing to me. Santa's super moon. <laughs> And Milky Way. Okay. Um, um, this is awesome. I'm just going to give this a pick. I just love that the shape of the flare here is that kind of mirrors the shape of the road. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. You're right. This is the Photoshop flare, isn't it? I don't know why my Zoom is being all weird. But I still like it. They did the best with it. So pick to you, Jordan. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Most people wouldn't even notice that stuff. It's just that's we kind of what we wrong. do. So we're... Siobhan, do you have any picky. questions or comments while Tony figures out this over here? Sure. Just importing pictures, not really. Oh man, How we got a lot of pictures. Do I get great photos when it is overcast? Should I just wait for another day? No. An overcast day is a great day to get portraits. The sky becomes a giant soft box. That's how. What else, Siobhan? <laughs> How do I keep my camera stable when I am taking pictures on a boat? I'm going fishing and I want to take pictures of birds because birds feed where the fish are. I would freeze the water and then your boat won't move and then use a tripod. Solid advice. <laughs> or just use a faster shutter speed. What else? Yeah, it's really not any different. You've got to handhold it anyway, so. How do you pick the photography style you focus on? I enjoy so many different styles. It is hard to pick one. I'm not really sure what you mean by style. Yeah, I was thinking genre, but if you mean genre, that's how I heard it. Yeah. If you mean genre, then well, if you don't want to do it professionally, and then you don't have to pick, you know. Yeah, it seems um, like a non-issue to me. Or if you're just... an educator like us, you get to just do whatever you want, which is cool. I think um, anybody should just go after whatever they're feeling passionate about at the moment. Like if you're excited to take portraits, then use that energy and go for it. You don't need to say, oh, I'm a landscape photographer, therefore I'm not going to shoot portraits or vice versa. A lot of people, once they start shooting professionally, they'll focus on one thing so that they can really... Yeah, I think if you're trying to make a name for yourself, trying to make a career for yourself, it it helps to kind of... Pick something, but if you're just enjoying it, just go for it. And and if that'll come to the surface eventually, anyway, 
if you shoot a little bit of everything and your wildlife gets all the attention, then that's where you should put your energy. You got good tips. What else, Siobhan? How is the G5 holding up? What is the best lens for your G5 system for video and stills? Uh, I think the GH5 has been awesome. It's It's been it's like close to perfect. Little nitpicks like the disc button is right on the grip and we hit it accidentally all, all the time. All day, every day. Yeah, um, we've all seemed to like it. You and Justin have had more experience with it than I have, so I don't know which lens is. Yeah, I think the best lens is a Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8 with a Canon mount, and then the Metabone Speed Booster, the XL 0.64x. Very cool. So, in other words, like the best lens is not a micro four thirds lens, but that's definitely the lens that I like. Lots of background blur, great low light capabilities. Solid Heavy. advice, Tony Northrop. Let's look at the spooky dragon picture. Okay. It's awesome, right? I'm going to give it a pick right yeah, away. It's cool. Uh, and again, balancing the foreground and background exposure. Exposure. Okay, we'll just go with that. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> it really <laughs> spazzed out. Sorry, all the people in the middle. This picture is the extreme brightness of a campfire when you're shooting right into it. But okay, you get a pick. That's an awesome yeah, shot. Yeah, you do. Great storytelling, too. Michael Mich Wade. Michelle. What is my... Oh, Michelle, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, there's already not enough girls in this industry. Don't be calling them Michael. <laughs> right, Michelle? It's like, what are we putting up with? It's not the worst mistake <laughs> I've made reading somebody's name. It's really not. And I've made worse as well. I love the colors. Um, I think that your watermark is a little aggressive. I might just make it opaque, a little bit transparent, because my eye goes right to it. Yeah. Um. And I would either raise the shadows like you did or crop it tighter. I'm you know, just either crop the, it. yeah. If the picture is just their faces kissing, then or almost kissing, then that's that. And I think it's a great shot to use the sunset to silhouette them. But it's composed around their whole bodies, but we couldn't see her dress in the original exposure. So good job. Great job, Michelle. So kind of a classic shot underneath classic. the here low to the ground um level the horizon if it's not good but otherwise colors. i think everything's perfect the exposure like looks great <gasps> oh beautiful see i told you norwegians <laughs> yeah uh i actually feel like i want to lower the exposure a little bit here the sky looks a little bit blown out and oh. it didn't immediately convey as a night shot yeah just get a little more contrast in there um i do like it to be nice and bright but i yeah, I just want a little more contrast. Maybe even lower the blacks a little. I, I think that's too much. I almost kind of, I think his washed out thing was a look. Hmm. That's what Norway's about, you know? <laughs> I like this a lot. I'm going to give it a pick. Awesome shot, Michael. Oh, you gave it a Mikkel? pick too? Yeah, we, we gave it picks, double pick. <laughs> Oh, we butcher names. <laughs> Mike Pettigrew. Um, I wish we could see some more stars here, because to me that's a big part of the focal point, but they're they're just almost completely lost. I see we have a ton of light pollution because there are stars there. I don't know what time of day it was, but if you wait until later, you would definitely get less pollution and therefore the stars would pop more. Give it a pick. Or just go farther out. You're already in Montana. You're in Montana. And what else are you going to do? Chapter 5 in stunning digital photography. Is just and you know, call your mom. <laughs> Chapter I felt eight, like we were being real bossy, calling. so I just wanted to just wanted to add to that. Mike. Another shot of Boston. Good. Good, 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 good. Um, there's a, a, the thing about skylines is if you go too wide and you try to show the whole skyline, then most of the shot becomes something else like it's just almost a distraction so for me i tend to either go i tend to go a little bit tighter or we need to find something that fills the rest of the foreground but most of this this picture ended up being distracting we know mike your serpent picture is very cool oh my gosh it's mike hour mike mike is this bat is this what's the matter look at the colors here look very different is it just because there are different lights 
that could be nights night photography in a city can be so rough you'll always get weird colors because they tend to like different buildings different street lights use different colors oh black and white works really good on that yeah i'm from black and white on this one yeah me too i shot mike we haven't seen any black and white pictures mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah, this is another shot where cropping might help actually filling more of the frame you know there's not much going on in the sky you have little splashes of color in the clouds don't you but... want to google this why because don't you feel like he uses that name in forums or something <laughs> why do you want to stalk that guy i always like... stalk it's my nature <laughs> wait is that okay this might be the same you're guy. cheating okay um <clears throat> the Okay, there are a few things we can do. The colors ended Help up me. a little bit yellow. So we can try to I'll adjust that. And um, it's taken so far after dark, that there's nothing left in the sky. So the whole top part of the picture is just black and the whole bottom part of the picture is just pavement. So we need something to kind of fill the frame. But otherwise the exposure looks good. You got a nice and sharp picture, even a half a second. So I think everything else has worked out really good. <clears throat> This is this pretty is awesome. awesome. It's a self-portrait. He hey. did an awesome job of putting himself in the frame. And yeah, it had a lot of pavement, but he put an interesting subject there. Good, good, good. Nice job. I'm oh, sorry. Thank you, Happy. A sea urchin. Neato. We're at 545. We need to move a little okay, faster. Okay, we'll move it along. Olivier Costier. All right. Um, I think that's an amazing shot of the Eiffel Tower. That's like one of the best Eiffel Tower shots I've ever seen. It's got to be one of the most photographed subjects in the world. But the fog and the color and the transition from the yellow to the blue is pretty amazing. I, I wouldn't mind seeing it cropped in. You know, the, a lot of the bottom part is just the water. And to me, it's all about the Eiffel Tower. I like it. But yeah, I think it turned out really good. Wow. Monument of the Mexican Revolution. Um, well, what a beautiful spot. Looks like you got a planet in the sky up there. Beautiful. Beautiful colors. Yeah. Nicely done. Mm. Um, Please don't say chemtrails. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was actually just baffled by the green color. I, I'm going to assume that happened in post, but I've just never seen a green color in a sunset. Green sunset? You never heard of that? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Pat. Hmm. I'd like to see this brightened up, but then I did too much. This is an awesome spot. Oh, oh Sandra. What do you think? We might need a signature on something. Do, I'm going to go do, check do, it. Do, so, do, it's the Chelsea do, Show. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I'd probably sing. singing. Yeah, <laughs> there is always singing. All right, so Pat, I wanted to see more of the picture. So if you look at the before and after, you were pretty dark. Once you raise the shadows a bit, you get some of the sky. You get more definition in the buildings. It looks more sparkly. But nice picture overall. Another, wait, is this the same Pat? No, sorry. Dinner in Venice. That looks nice. You have a story. Whatever this is in the foreground kind of blocks it a bit, but um, it looks good. Another pat. Why do we keep doing the show alphabetically? I like the streets. It's a little bit warm, so I might just change the colors a bit. And then it's not as yellowy. Um, it's an interesting spot. It'd be cool to see people walking through or maybe see the sky a bit more. I feel like we've seen this before, but maybe people just like bridges. I like the movement of the cars, the long exposure, 15 seconds, I see. Let's see here. Looks good. Oh my gosh. Paul, um, you live near me. <laughs> oh, that's, that's crazy. It's frightening to me. Sorry, we have like a hundred pictures of the whale tail in New London. 
There was nobody at the door. It's just we didn't feed Sandy before we came down here. My dog, <laughs> Sandy, gets fed at 5 o'clock every day. And Except... Thursdays, our show starts at 5 o'clock. So usually we feed her early. But well, we were... she did ask for food early, but we got a flat tire. Yeah, there was a crazy day today. Today has been stupid. <laughs> So anyway, Sandy was just fed up. She's like, it's 4, 5, 49, and you guys Enough. haven't fed me yet. Now. Um, this is actually an interesting subject because there's a lot going on in the background, so you have to kind of manage it. And I think the best shots we got were to pull in a little bit closer. Um, it looks like maybe you fired a flash because there's this kind of shadow over here. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that definitely like made the colors pop a little bit, but that. I think it's a good picture of the scene though. You got the train station there. You got Harry's taxi in the background. It's all going on. <laughs> yeah, great shot. Paul Harp, mall cop. <laughs> this is beautiful. Yeah, this scene is a lot to take in. There's just a lot of detail in here. The sky is is beautiful. Um, it must have been pick. a windy day because even at half a second, those clouds are completely smooth and blurred. I love that this looks like very classic and old, and this looks very modern, and they just kind of meet. Mm -hmm. And ain't that just life, you know? I'm going to give it a more... pick again. Oh, you actually upped the contrast some already. Yeah, I did. I'm a professional. You're on it. <laughs> We're still in the peas. Portugal. I love Portugal. I um, think that is a beautiful spot. I don't know that I Oh Tony, yeah, we, we did. There. We walked over this. Yeah, yeah, this is a great angle on it. Um How'd you get pick. there? Beautiful. Remember this part, Tony, where it was like all grown over? This is gorgeous. I'm yeah. gonna give this a pick as well. Great shot. Dang. That is a great focal point for it's a Star Trail picture. Mm-hmm. And you get it right between the windmill blades i think you call them yeah but how pissed were you about this one plane that went through just the corner of your shot he was pissed i talked to, uh, i just talked to him you, you can go in and find that one frame because it's probably in one or two frames and just touch it out uh, but it's not bad wow. um that is gorgeous that's surreal wow, wow, wow. look at that foreground nice shot neil beautiful peter whoa thousand stars a party at peter's house um, yeah, the exposure here is really difficult to manage. I would definitely bracket the shot and probably blend different multiple exposures because it's gonna, it's not gonna, you're never gonna capture the house in a reasonable way without making the stars too dark and vice versa. Mm -hmm. But you know what? He shot it on film. <laughs> so so what? it just occurred to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mm-hmm. It is a gorgeous scene. I'm just wondering about the inclusion of the car. Is that I was a bit of foreground I'm making it better? Taking the car out, like Yeah, he probably could have just moved forward if he didn't want it in there, but it's just the 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 car could be an interesting focal point. It's just it's cropped a little weird in the middle of the car, but yeah, that right there is better. So you could crop you, with you your feet. Peter Smith. I say everyone's name. I don't know why, but I like I like to know these people. Um, you could go a little earlier and get some more of the sky in there. Uh oh. All right, I see what you did. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you did a little dodging and burning yourself. But uh, go a little earlier and you'll get the <laughs> the blue sky. I always feel a little bit bad but amused when I see people's work in the shadows. But I've also done that in my own work, and it's taught me to like kind of clean that up a bit. This feels like a street photo to me, and I just wish there was a story, like somebody, had, um, like, like um, a llama or something at the bus stop. A lonely baby. Uh, Phil content aware. Uh, and again, I think this, some more story here would help out, like handing of the hot dog. No, I think he has, um, you think he has a hot dog or a pretzel? A hot dog, I think you're right. Oh, yeah, they're right. There are pretzels there no, and hot dogs right. there. It's a, definitely a hot dog. You don't pre- mustard the pretzel you're right, right? it's up to the buyer to yeah. mustard their own pretzel dang i'm so everybody hungry. knows chelsea i love food um we gotta have a skateboarder hitting that or something right oh yeah those skateboarders yeah you just need a little action going on in this oh totally and you know the bottom third of the picture is just the yeah pavement sure we could recompose that a little we bit we could do that 
And we're yeah. in nice job on the symmetry. I'm going to give you a pick. Beautiful colors. Love symmetry. Great color in the sky. People say that about him. That's what they're saying about Philip. <laughs> um, that's beautiful. I know you're going to adjust that exposure a little bit. Sure, I am. Yeah. Oh, Get a wow. Little contrast in there. Wow, make wow, it pop. Pick. Who's this guy? This smoky, mysterious man. Yeah, I like this concert shot a lot. And I, I kind of like this. Yeah, I would definitely pull him down a little bit and maybe even crop in a little tighter. Um, I mean, I don't mind the negative space. Oops. I guess it depends how you're going to be publishing it. But for online formats, I would probably crop it a little tighter around there because you'll still get the story. Really nice. That style. guy with a cell phone definitely like adds the context. Yeah. Oops. Mm, good colors. Yeah, I think this is a good example of a silhouette. Good. The fairy there feels weird to me. Like, you don't know what that is unless you've done night photography. And then you're like, oh, yeah, there's a stupid fairy going through the shot. So <laughs> you might just have to keep it up until you get a oh, frame without he one. He submitted two pictures. Oh, you're dead to us. You're dead to us. Um, This one is just too too late at night. There's just too much contrast. You know, it just falls into blackness. But... A little earlier in the day. Siobhan, do yeah, let's go to Siobhan. I, I just like the zipper picture for some reason. It's awesome. Very good. Already Mira. Do you know we got another money comment? Yay, money comment. We should Yay. have a bell we ring or something. A bing bing. <laughs> We're greedy. The dear Rob Tillets paid twenty dollars to call me the ballerina's allegro. <laughs> Oh, that's kind of beautiful. That's which apparently is a thing. What does it mean? It's a you know f fancy ballet move. What? Oh, well, could you I show us? Know. Could you show us the no. ballerina's allegro? No. You studied I did. ballet for fifteen years. I think you can bust out an allegro. That is a boldface lie. I did do ballet when I was in like second grade, maybe. And then I ran on my toes for years afterwards. You're a toe baby. You still wear those funny shoes that they wear, <laughs> the, like flat toes. <laughs> I didn't even make You just don't see your feet shoes. and you don't know. But <laughs> You have to work up to fancy shoes. And you don't get yeah. those in no. second grade? No, 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 you don't. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like this question. Are there any techniques besides spot color that pro photographers shy away from or use only seldomly? Oh yeah, a lot. HDR is a big one. Uh, fake solar flare, oversaturation, too much clarity. It depends on the pro. Some won't really edit at all. They just want to get everything in camera. Yeah. So there you have it. <laughs> what else, Siobhan? Not much. Um, People are like... Could you please do some reviews of the latest flagship camera phones like the Galaxy S8 or the LG G6? Yeah, we've talked about doing smartphone stuff. I know where you're going with that. <laughs> Look at Tony. <laughs> uh, that's a submission for um your friend's gray haired website oh my gosh i will he be checking out this website you. i just like it because i have a head that's proportionate to my body <laughs> which in real life is not the way it works <laughs> yeah me either we're big-headed people tony it's fine all right let's look at some more pictures we'll try to get through them we have a couple more minutes left yeah that's gorgeous that's right beautiful. i love the inclusion of the Sign in the foreground. Uh, what else is catching eye? Look at this one with the lighthouse. Ooh, Stacy. I wish there were a little more okay. separation between them because of what? the one balance. I like it. Cool. It's like they're in love. But wait. What? Uh, what? I thought maybe it was fake. You're fake. Ah. Uh, hey, look at this. Oh, she's going to eat it. I'd rather have a Jay's burger. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. That's awesome. Dang. Yeah, that is super badass. This is so cool. Yeah, I know you're going to raise that exposure. Dang. 
Dang, I would love to do a shot like that. That is awesome. That is so cool. Yeah. I wonder where the smoke came from. I want to know more about this. Can I give it another Just Jane and her five crew. stars and a pick? Yeah. Wow. That's Good my job. favorite picture. Yeah, that was a really stunning shot. Um, it's definitely better brightened up. As a thumbnail, it didn't even really convey. I'm glad you spotted that. I didn't mean to um do that. So maybe this whole thumbnail thing isn't all it's cracked up to be. It's a marvelous night for a moon dance. Um, the only thing is you got to get the guy doing the spinning to adopt some kind of interesting pose because they will necessarily become an important focal point. This is Tony Soprano's picture. Like, I'm very scared right now. It might actually be a little bit bright. We have to keep moving, Tony. Oh. Beautiful shot. Very nice. Oh, bonk photography. Nice colors. Yeah, maybe just tighter because you just have nothing in the foreground, but I like the I like atmosphere. the leading lines. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd maybe brighten it up so you could see the palm trees a little bit. I like this angle and you got some of the sky in there. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, that's nice. You have some motion in there. I like that a lot. And, and you kind of chose the composition with the fence. Um, this is almost devoid of color. I like color. Yeah, I think the reflection is cool. Maybe just hope for a better sky. That's some color. New York. New York. Oh, wow. That's a wow. gorgeous shot. Okay, Vlad, you get a pick. That's pretty nice. I mean, the sky is kind of gone, but just the, the lights on the Eiffel Tower. By the way, don't try to sell that picture. <laughs> They've... They've like copyrighted the, light the lights on the Eiffel Tower, so you can't do anything with it. Is this bath? We were there. Oh, is that bath? Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice shot. That's definitely another place you've been, right? Is this Copenhagen? Yeah, I think it's it's Copenhagen. Uh, Niven? Niven. That's definitely how you say it. Oh my gosh, I love this. I'm going to give this a pick. It is different. Yeah, I like it that too. It makes me feel. It is definitely different. I like that shot. Makes me sad. That's a cool shot too. I don't know, just something about it. I mean, obviously the fisheye distortion makes it interesting, but the inclusion of the stop sign is cool. Nice yeah. shot, to be honest. Wow, this looks like it's fake. I like it very much. Moons. Yeah, nice shot of the moon. Wow. Maybe a little too much green. Yeah, I can't imagine that it's actually that green. We don't know, but... Um, and again, earlier in the day, we'd get some detail in the sky. That's it. Pop a little more. We did it. <laughs> like, like we looked at them all. We did it all. Sorry, huh? we didn't actually look at everybody's picture, but thanks for sending it in. And any last thoughts before we go, Siobhan? Yeah, what else is going on? Uh, no, I we got another money question. Okay, it's what camera would you suggest for a videographer that also loves taking pictures? I have my eyes on the A7R2. Um, I wanted to use that to plug sdp.io slash which camera, which is a comprehensive list of our recommendations for cameras and lens setups in okay. every different genre at different price points. And one of them is videos and stills. That is a great suggestion. Yeah, it basically goes X-T2 and then A7R2. But I would, I would add to that the Olympus EM1 Mark II is a good kind of does everything camera so mm -hmm. you can pick your pick your sensor size okay i guess we can check out we'll see you guys in two weeks when the theme is abandoned mm. we, we're getting moody with it did the patreon no, they chose that sponsors pick that yeah, yeah. all right thanks patreon for and if patrons. you want your own wonderful website like the ones that you've seen on today's show go to squarespace.com slash tony put on the coupon code portfolio to get 10 percent off or you could just try it for free no credit card needed you get a 14 day trial and you can put together your pictures and see what looks nice um yeah thanks <laughs> thanks guys we'll see you in a couple of weeks bye thanks justin thanks bye. siobhan okay. 
that is all. I got that. Wonderful night for a moon dance. Mm-hmm. Song 